this week on Inspire Today. What are some of the things that can guide my daily decisions? How can I decide what's best for me to eat? So, you know, really quickly, you know, when you think about farmer's markets, I encourage people, if you can, to shop at farmer's markets. What you have there is access to produce when it's in its like highest nutritional value. You know, you want to get things that are in season right. when it comes to that. So farmer's markets are a great way to do that. Shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. So next time you're in a grocery store, think about how it's laid out. Typically the fruits and the vegetables and the dairy and all of those things are on the perimeter, the frozen fruits and vegetables tend to be on the perimeter. When you think about going down the aisles, what's down there? The packaged processed foods. I tend to shop around the perimeter more so than going down the aisles. Right, because they need to keep the refrigeration and everything is right. bringing in the cool. Exactly. It has to be hooked up somewhere. Right. It can't be running through the middle right. of the aisle. Wow, I, yeah. I never thought of so that. So when you think about healthier <laughs> options, it tends to be around the perimeter of the grocery store as opposed to down the aisles where the all of the process, <laughs> processed foods <laughs> tend to be. Um, and then also another thing that I try to um, get people to think about is to eat foods that will eventually rot. So think about that. When you have an apple or orange and it's starting to go bad, the same, you know, the bacteria that's on that piece of fruit that is also fighting for the nutrients that we are trying to get from it as well. So you want your food to eventually rot. That means that it is alive. So real food is alive and therefore must die. So right. when you think about something processed, it has a shelf life for years, some right. of these products. And when you even thinking about, you know, some fast food, I've seen studies where they'll take a burger and french fries and sit it out for months. And that thing that. is just hard as a rock. You don't see it decaying or decomposing. Real food is alive and therefore must die. So when I say wow. eat real food, that's why I say eat real food. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, next, eat foods you can picture in their raw state or growing in nature. I can picture an apple, I can picture an orange, I can picture carrots growing as they do in nature. Mm -hmm. I can't picture a lot of the processed ingredients and things that are added to processed foods. You can't picture that because they are manufactured in a lab. Right. So you want to really think about eating foods that you can see growing. You can imagine them growing in a garden. Right. All right. Eat closer to the earth. So basically what that means is that the closer to the earth, the shorter the food chain, the healthier the food is likely to be, the less processed is likely to be. And then finally, eat foods as you find them in nature. And again, I go back to the juicing segment where I talked about the juicing loses the fiber, smoothies, you know, contain the fiber. So when you think about an apple, it is packaged with the pulp for a reason. It allows it to absorb into our bloodstream a lot slowly and it makes us feel fuller quicker. Right. Now, the last two I want to do before mm -hmm. we run out of time is show your spices some love yes. and I eat indulgence. Yes, yes. Okay, so show your spices some love is basically saying, you know, when it comes to seasoning your food, a lot of people think healthy food has to be bland or boring. I say it doesn't. I say get into your spice cabinet and start to experiment with the spices that are in there so you can control the amount of sugar, salt, and oil that tends to be in your foods. Um, and then when it comes to indulgences, I call baked goods, desserts, junk food, I call those indulgences, which means that I have them occasionally. But my rule, and I hope that this is helpful to the viewers, is that when you think about an indulgence, I only have it if I'm willing to make it. No matter how old you are, no matter the color of your skin, whatever your desire, through God and prayer, you can achieve great things. This show was created to educate, inspire, and provide spiritual insight to fulfill God's purpose for your life. This is Aspire Today. Aspire Nation, Health Nation, people looking for something better in their life as it relates to your health, your mental state, your spiritual state. I know last week you totally enjoyed and got a lot out of our show. And guess what? This woman of God is back. Miss Shawnee Hayes is back to share with us some more tidbits on the get healthy. Listen, we need to get fit for the kingdom. We need to get fit for our children, our spouses, our career paths. We need to be in shape. So the only way to get in shape is to learn from someone who's conquered that stronghold. And so today's show, you're going to see live examples in front of you of, of of juicing and mm -hmm. she's going to talk to us about what good juice is and what mm -hmm. bad juice is and mm -hmm. going to end the show dealing with uh, some more tips on our health. So mm -hmm. don't you move. Stay right there. 
at your television because you're going to be blessed. Ms. Charnay, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> it's, I mean, just the different names of sugar astounds me. <laughs> I know. It's almost this, like they're trying to hide things oh, from yes, us. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very hidden. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we were talking last week and mm -hmm. one of our ministers wanted to really know about the juice that they have in the store. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere you go, 100% this, 100% right. right. that. But then you turn and you look at the back of the label right. and it says more than just the name yes, of the fruit, right? Exactly. So yes. Tip us to that. What's going right. on with that? Right. So what you just said, it says more than the name of the fruit. So if you're someone who is, you know, first of all, I'm a big believer in making your own juice at home, which is why we're going to, you know, get into that later. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who, you know, doesn't have a juicer and just wants the convenience of being able to pick up a juice, look for look for juice that is a hundred percent juice, whatever that fruit is. So if it's orange juice, look for it to be one hundred percent oranges. Mm -hmm. OK, it doesn't need to be anything else. No added sugar, no added uh, whatever else they could put it. I mean, gosh, what else? You why do you want to mess oranges up? <laughs> I mean, by putting stuff in it. But you'll see a lot of times they'll do like fruit juice concentrate. They'll add different types of syrups to it, artificial colors and flavors. Which again, those are all things that can you know affect our you know our health as well as our brain. Um, but you want it to just be 100% pure juice if possible. Nothing else added. Right now, stores <laughs> such as. Mom's Organic, mm -hmm. places like that, are those good places to go to find these 100% like foods, mm -hmm. organic foods and juices? Yeah, Mom's is great. I mean, also, you know, just if you're thinking about just your local, you know, area grocery stores, those are great as well. The key is really becoming a, someone who looks at the ingredients. Mm -hmm. That really is the key. No matter what store you're in, looking at the ingredients is what's going to determine, is this the best decision? Is this the best option? Is this the healthiest option that I can make? Right. You know, right, so I yeah. So, yep. So, not being lazy and other not, Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just taking a little bit of time to read what's on the back of the ingredients. Right. That's right. even more so important than the nutritional, the nutrition facts. Mm -hmm. What is in that product? <clears throat> yeah, because I, I know that sometimes you turn on the back of a carton and you see all of these different things and we're consuming that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, I know that they link a lot of different things to mm -hmm. what, especially cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, absolutely. So we want to, audience, we want to pay attention to what we're doing, right? Just absolutely. The same way that we pay attention to our light bill. Right. Same way we, we right. pay attention to if our car sounds right. fine when right. we started up in the morning. Absolutely. We need to pay attention to what we're putting in our temple, Definitely. in our bodies. Yes. One of the things that I tell my clients is avoid food products that you can't pronounce. Yes. Or that you would not keep in your pantry. Come on, talk about that. Talk, <laughs> so talk think about, about it. That. So you're, you're looking at a product and you see something on it called um, soy protein or soy mm -hmm. protein concentrate. Mm -hmm. Or you see something called monosodium glutamate, which is MSG. I or you see something called ethyl, ethyl xylated diglycerides. Like, I can only pronounce it because I've studied it. Right. But your average <laughs> consumer is looking at that like, what is that? Exactly. And and where would you keep that in your pantry? You know what I mean? So think about things like that. Like if it's something that you can't picture in your pantry, then I would be cautious about, you know, what it is and what it could ultimately do to your right. health. Right. <laughs> Y'all heard that right. If you can't pronounce it, if you can't break it down in syllables and still say it right, don't put it in your body. And if you can't picture it growing, <laughs> growing outside in a garden. Yeah, glycerides don't grow right, outside, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> they're manufactured, they're created. So come yeah, on. right. Come on. Come on. So we want to have foods that we can picture growing in their raw state. We can picture growing in a garden. We can go outside and bring it inside. Farm to table, that truly is farm to table. Wow. Going outside to your garden, picking those collard greens or kale, bring them inside and cooking them for your family. You wow. Know? Yeah. Wow. Yes, yeah, nothing wrong. I mean, the Bible is based on farming. Yes. God, in Genesis 8, 22, God says, as long as the earth remains, mm. seed time and harvest. Mm, that's good. You put something in God's ground and it produces a harvest yes. that he intended yes. for our lives, Ooh, right? Come on. Yes. So <laughs> That's right. That's good stuff. I tell that's you, we're we going to do some juicing, okay, right? Okay. Let's All do right. some juicing. So audience, what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to get set up. We'll take a quick little break. We'll have some information for you. And then when we come back, Miss Hayes is going to show us the proper way to juice, mm -hmm. how to juice, 
She'll have her machine up and we're going to bless you with a real live presentation of how to digest a uh, healthy amounts of food because mm -hmm. some people they can't take foods in their, I think you said their raw form or their, right. their it, solid form. Exactly. Right. So right. you need to juice. Right. So we're going to show you the right way to do it. We'll be right back. Awesome. Aspire Nation, welcome to Real Juicing. All right. So right now we're going to talk about juicing really quickly, and then I'm going to walk through three simple juicing recipes um, that I think you would love, and we're going to have Pastor even try them. Um, so juicing is simply taking fruits and vegetables and extracting the juice from them. And, you know, what is left is a concentrated, nutrient-rich uh, juice that you want to consume as soon you know, as possible, because the longer that the juice sits, it kind of takes away from the nutritional value. So I want to briefly share the benefits of juicing, and then I'm going to start making these recipes. So when you think about juicing, I want you to remember the acronym DRINK, D-R-I-N-K. D is for detoxification. Um, when you think about juicing, it really does detoxify our system. It kind of cleanses our system. And also D is for digestion. It absolutely makes it a lot easier to kind of digest the fruits and the vegetables. So if you are someone who has trouble like, you know, consuming an apple on the skin, it's really hard for you to digest that fiber. Or even when it comes to fruits, um, to other vegetables like kale or carrots, juicing will allow you to, you know, get the benefits of kale and carrots and all of these other whole fruits and vegetables. But it'll be a lot easier for your body to digest and easier for to absorb into the bloodstream. R is for rest. So when you think about juicing, you are actually giving your intestines and your stomach a break. All right, so R is for rest. So juicing is really good if you want to just take a break from having to digest so much food, right? I and N is for ideal nutrients. And so what I mean by that is that fruits and vegetables can be combined to create these super juices that can be treated for or that can be actually created to treat specific ailments. So if you're someone who you're looking to, maybe you're suffering from bloating or maybe you're trying to, um, you want something for liver support or kidney support or even cancer prevention, cancer prevention, you can actually put fruits and vegetables together in a very concentrated way to treat certain ailments. Um, K is for our kids. I didn't want to leave our kids out. If you have kids who just willingly eat fruits and vegetables, then you're lucky because I don't. <laughs> but what juicing does, it allows me to kind of create these delicious juices that my kids can drink and they are still getting the benefits of the fruits and vegetables, but in a juice form. So drink. I want you to remember that when it comes to the benefits of juicing. Okay, for this recipe, we are going to use celery. We're going to use a cucumber. We're going to put some kale in this. We're going to do some um, lemon. And then we're also going to do some ginger, which I have ready, and some cilantro. So let's get started. Okay, so this is our green energy juice. So if you are someone who is looking to boost your energy, maybe you haven't been getting a lot of sleep, or maybe you just need a quick pick-me-up, this is 100% juice. This is our green energy juice. Aspire Nation, we are back with more healthy juicing. And before I get into the second recipe, I just want to talk briefly about the difference between juicing and making smoothies, because I get asked that question a lot. So juicing, you're basically taking an apple or a cucumber or a carrot, you're taking, removing the pulp or the fiber, okay? And you're drinking that in its concentrated juice form once it has gone through the juicer. With a smoothie, you're kind of keeping those, um, the fiber intact and you're blending that up in the smoothie. So what the fiber does, because I want you all to understand that it is good stuff. Um, nature always comes packaged with fiber when we think about an apple or we think about the outside of a carrot or things of that nature. And what the fiber does, it allows us to feel fuller quicker when we eat, like say, an, a full apple. Um, but when you're taking juice in its pure form, when you think about it, I'm fuller when I eat an apple in its whole state as opposed to when I drink just apple juice. It just makes me fuller. So that's kind of the difference between juicing and smoothies. With the smoothies, you're still getting the fiber, and with the juicing, you're not. 
All right, so let's get into our second recipe, which is a carrot and apple juice. And so for this recipe, we're gonna do carrots, apple, we're gonna do lemon again, and ginger, and that's it. So we are going to give this a stir and then I'm going to taste again. So you can see the carrots yield a lot of juice. It's one of my favorite vegetables to juice with. Cucumbers also, they are a good juicing base is what I like to call them. Uh -oh. So let's just see how this tastes. Ooh, this is delicious. <laughs> I think I might like this a little bit better than my green energy juice. It's all good. It's a little sweeter because of the carrots, but this is really delicious. All right, so that is recipe number two, and we have one more coming up. All right, Aspire Nation, we are back with our final juice recipe. And before I get into that, remember when I was talking about the difference between juicing and smoothies? Juicing removes the fiber. As you can see, there's got the carrots that have been removed, the ginger, all the things in our previous recipe, the juicing process removes that fiber from it. So I just kind of want to show you this so that you can see the difference in juicing and again, making smoothies. All right, so for our final recipe, this is a beet and ginger juice recipe. And so we're gonna be using some beets. We're gonna be using another green apple, another cucumber, half of a lemon, and then some ginger. are done with that. I'm going to give this one a quick stir as well. Look at all that good color. Ah. So one thing about beets, they are very high in vitamins and minerals and just all types of good nutrients. Um, I like my beets juiced. I don't like them cooked. <laughs> I know some people do like cooked beets, but I prefer to juice them. Ooh, that is a beautiful color. Look at that. Oh, another good one. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm biased, but all three of these recipes are delicious, and I hope that you will give them a try and let me know what you think about them. Okay, we are back. Now, who is a fan of juicing? <laughs> I bet everybody is going to run out and get a juicer and... Before we end, we're going to tell you the type of juicer that she had. That thing was so powerful. <laughs> uh, Shanae, that was absolutely wonderful. Awesome. I mean, our producers and our mm -hmm. cameramen got an opportunity to taste yes. what you made, but I didn't get the opportunity. Right. So <laughs> I'm going to indulge. Uh oh. This is green energy, That's right? That's the green energy juice. It now, once again, what's in this? It's uh, kale, lemon, uh, cucumbers, apple, ginger, and that's it, and cilantro. Okay. Yeah. So right. has a has more of a, a, a tangy kind of a uh, not really sweet taste. It's crisp. Mm -hmm. okay. I understand why it's green machine. Yes. But it's refreshing. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. So it's not going to be your sweetest of the juices that we made, but it still it gives you energy because of what's in it. I sense you said kale. Uh huh. Yep. And what else? Is Cilantro. In it? Those Cilantro. are the greens. Right. I think that's what it is. It's okay. good. Yeah. All it's right. Good. All right. He likes it. <laughs> that is very refreshing. Awesome. All right. I'm going to save the best one for last based on the feedback. Okay. The crew. <laughs> the crew. Okay. <laughs> and this one I know has beets. Yes. That's our beet ginger juice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it has beets, ginger, um, cucumber, and I can't remember what else I put in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Let's hopefully see. we have the recipes for the viewers. This is sweeter. Yes. That one is sweeter. That one yeah, is sweeter. This yep. is sweeter. It's I think almost, it's probably from the apple. It's almost like a 
Slow must like something uh, like a soda without the sparkle. Okay. Almost. Or the to sugar. Me. Or the sugar. <laughs> or the added sugar. <laughs> well, that one tastes pretty good. Yeah, I like that okay. one. Okay. He likes it. See, I don't like beets by themselves, but I will drink a beet juice. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Okay. He likes that one. <laughs> yeah, I really like this one. Yes. <laughs> He likes it. He likes wow, it. Wow, that's not bad. Like Mikey. <laughs> like Mikey. <laughs> now, this was the favorite. Yeah. So this it is needs the a one stir, that, but yeah. Listen, <laughs> the producers, the cameramen, the assistants, my executive men, they raved about this. Yes. They said they want this one. Yes. So. so that's our carrot apple juice and carrots, apples, uh, ginger again, and then uh, I think a little bit of lemon as well. I'll shake it up so I yeah, can see so sure you shake it up a little I'm bit. Yeah. Hopefully, you'll be able to. Aha. Uh -huh. uh <laughs> now, I can tell you this. Okay. One, two, three. That's your me. order. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is good. That's the I best. I see one. why they like this. Wow, okay. that's good. <laughs> awesome. Isn't that it's healthy. Yes. This is phenomenal. You could drink this with a meal. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy yourself. Absolutely. It's helping your digestive system. Mm -hmm. It's giving you everything that you need. Yes. So I so enjoy this. Awesome. I'm so glad. <laughs> and look at that beautiful color. Remember yes. I said to eat in color, even drink in color. <laughs> eat in color, drink in color. Yes. I'm going to move these to the side a little bit okay. while we finish talking out. All so right. it's not just all in our way. But okay. Aspire Nation, you guys... I pray that you were able to just receive everything that Miss Shawnee mm -hmm. shared with us. Uh, I'll keep the green machine there for you so you can just <laughs> understand that we're talking about juicing. Yes. Now, awesome. um, I want to go to the last part of your presentation. Mm -hmm. And where I want to start at is dealing with uh, food wisdoms. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to them a little bit about these things that you have here. And remember, these things will be popping up on your screen so mm -hmm. you can see the information that she's sharing in her PowerPoint presentation. So yes. take it yep. away and so talk about that. Absolutely. So food wisdoms, basically, I want to help people think about what are some of the things that can guide my daily decisions? How can I decide what's best for me to eat? So, you know, really quickly, you know, when you think about farmer's markets, I encourage people, if you can, to shop at farmer's markets. What you have there is access to produce when it's in its like highest nutritional value. You know, you want to get things that are in season right. when it comes to that. So farmer's markets are a great way to do that. Shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. So next time you're in a grocery store, think about how it's laid out. Typically, the fruits and the vegetables and the dairy and all of those things are on the perimeter. The frozen fruits and vegetables tend to be on the perimeter. When you think about going down the aisles, what's down there? The packaged processed foods. I tend to shop around the perimeter more so than going down the aisles. Right, because they need to keep the refrigeration and everything is right. bringing in the cool. Exactly. It has to be hooked up somewhere. Right. It can't be running through the middle right. of the aisle. Wow, I, yeah. I never thought of so that. So when you think about healthier <laughs> options, it tends to be around the perimeter of the grocery store as opposed to down the aisles where the, all of the process, <laughs> processed foods <laughs> tend to be. Um, and then also another thing that I try to um, get people to think about is to eat foods that will eventually rot. So think about that. When you have an apple or orange and it's starting to go bad, the same, you know, the bacteria that's on that piece of fruit that is also fighting for the nutrients that we are trying to get from it as well. So you want your food to eventually rot. That means that it is alive. So real food is alive and therefore must die. So right. when you think about something processed, it has a shelf life for years, some right. of these products. And when you even thinking about, you know, some fast food, I've seen studies where they'll take a burger and french fries and sit it out for months. And that thing that. is just hard as a rock. You don't see it decaying or decomposing. Real food is alive and therefore must die. So when I say wow. eat real food, that's why I say eat real food. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, next, eat foods you can picture in their raw state or growing in nature. I can picture an apple. I can picture an orange. I can picture carrots growing as they do in nature. Mm -hmm. I can't picture a lot of the processed ingredients and things that are added to processed foods. You can't picture that because they are manufactured in a lab. Right. So you want to really think about eating foods that you can see growing. You can imagine them growing in a garden. Right. All right. Eat closer to the earth. So basically what that means is that the closer to the earth, the shorter the food chain, the healthier the food is likely to be, the less processed is likely to be. And then finally, eat foods as you find them in nature. And again, I go back to the juicing segment where I talked about 
the juicing loses the fiber, smoothies, you know, contain the fiber. So when you think about an apple, it is packaged with the pulp for a reason. It allows it to absorb into our bloodstream a lot slowly and it makes us feel fuller quicker. Right. Now, the last two I want to do before mm-hmm. we run out of time is show your spices some love yes. and I eat indulgence. Yes, yes. Okay, so show your spices some love is basically saying, you know, when it comes to seasoning your food, a lot of people think healthy food has to be bland or boring. I say it doesn't. I say get into your spice cabinet and start to experiment with the spices that are in there so you can control the amount of sugar, salt, and oil that tends to be in your foods. Um, and then when it comes to indulgences, I call baked goods, desserts, junk food, I call those indulgences, which means that I have them occasionally. But my rule, and I hope that this is helpful to the viewers, is that when you think about an indulgence, I only have it if I'm willing to make it. So oh, if wow. I want an apple pie or a chocolate chip cookie or a cake, I'm going to make it at home to really decide if I do want that, mm-hmm. because with that, I can control what's in it. When you're right. going to pick up something like that in the store, you're contending with a lot of other ingredients that are in that. Right. So right. I like to make my own <laughs> desserts. <laughs> Listen, just the work alone is going to make you think twice. And, th- and that's <laughs> the point. So, yes. <laughs> Makes you think, do I really want it? <laughs> right. And then lastly, mm-hmm. when you eat real food, you don't need rules. Yes. So when you eat real food, when you're eating food that is not processed, you really don't have to think about what you're eating because you know that you're getting what, you know, Mother Nature has given us, what God has given us in terms of, um, you know, just the way foods are grown. And you don't need to have a list of can't do this, can't do that, can't have this, can't have that. So think real food and it will just be a lot easier when it right. comes to eating. Well, yeah. Miss Hayes, uh, it's been it's been fun. Uh, yes, it has. It's been interactive, descriptive, yeah. and you did a phenomenal job. Thank you so much Absolutely. for your expertise, your love for God's people. Yes. Aspire Nation, remember, if you want to get in touch with Miss Shawnee, you can go to the Shawnee Life mm-hmm. at gmail.com and we'll have all this information up on your screen. Mm-hmm. You can go to Facebook.com forward slash groups floor forward slash all kale the power yes, i like that that's a nutrition community <laughs> exactly and her website is the shawnee yes and so get in touch with this woman of god change your lifestyle and live life on purpose we love you aspire nation we'll see you next week at 7 30 p.m we love you